All right, just a quick video showing James White, one of the Calvinistic gods of philosophy, who is exalted in the same vein as Catholics exalt their saints. It's actually really shocking to really uh, see that, how the Calvinists just exalt their, their um, circle of the, uh, theologians, uh, basically to the point of infallibility. You know, I've covered that in other videos. The point is, is that Calvinism, just like Protestantism, Reformed, whatever you want to call it, it's modified Catholicism. You know, and stuff like this proves that. But um, James White uh, does your typical Calvinist strawman logical fallacies, and in this case, he's twisting Acts chapter four to teach their Gnostic heresy that God actually causes sin. Because they'll take Ephesians one verse ten to eleven out of context, and I'm going to do a video covering this too. How Calvinism is just completely based upon twisting scriptures out of context and ignoring other verses too, and just reading your own theology into the text. But how they handle Acts 4, James White does your typical Calvinist eisegesis. I'll use Acts 4 as proof that all sin is ordained by God. Okay, watch him use this, uh, a fallacious, you know, false, you know, eisegesis-based argument. You stand on your head trying to explain the cross. You end up doing what this guy's going to do, and that is, Emilio keeps asking him, what about Acts 4? predestined by God's purpose, not, oh, well, God can make good come out of evil. Those are not the same things. Those are not the same things. You try to make them the same things, you're lying. Now, this is what eisegesis looks like. Eisegesis, see, when Calvinists approach the Bible, they have a pre-commitment to their tool of doctrine. So they're now having to read their own theology into the text, you know, and they have to ignore or, you know, outright just try to redefine or rephrase all the numerous scriptures that very explicitly teach God does not cause sin. I did a video showing that just scripture after scripture after scripture, you know, explicitly teach that God does not cause sin and that we're sinning and the guilt is our own fault and that we do it to ourselves. I mean, if you want some references, you can see Galatians 2, 17 to 18, James 1, verse 13 to 15, uh, there's Galatians 5, verses 6 to 8, there's Genesis 5, uh, 6, verse 5 to 6, Jeremiah 19, verse 5, Jeremiah 7, 31, Jeremiah 32, verse 35, I mean, on and on it goes. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Isaiah 30, verse 9, down to verse 16. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 23, down to verse 32, I believe it is. You know, Isaiah 10, verse 1. I mean, we could just go on and on. It's just numerous scripture. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20, down to verse 29, uh, talks about that. Genesis 8, verse 21, talks about how, you know, the evil comes from our heart. You can compare it over to James 1, 13. Uh, I mean, Deuteronomy 31, verses 27, down to verse 29. I could just go on and on and on. The point is, is that they ignore these numerous scriptures that explicitly teach sin is not, does not come from God and that God does not cause sin and that we sin, it's our own fault, you know, and that we're made perfect and that, you know, uh, like Ecclesiastes 7.29 says, you know, God hath made man upright, but he went after every other invention, you know. The point is, is that they have to ignore this and then they'll take these isolated ex uh, examples where God is incorporating the sinful intentions of men into his plan, and they will arbitrarily, illogically, and fallaciously argue that God is causing all sin throughout human history. You know, so they'll take the example of the Assyrians in Isaiah 10, or they'll have, you know, Joseph's brothers in Genesis 50, or they'll have, in this case, the crucifixion. So these isolated ex examples, where God is not even causing the sin, he's, he's incorporating their, their intentions, but he's not actually causing the actual sin or their intentions, because it comes from their own heart, according to James 1.13. So they take these isolated examples and just fallaciously, arbitrarily, and illogically argue that this proves that God is causing all sin throughout human history. I mean, it is completely eisegesis-based, okay? That's the point. Um, God, in his wisdom, can incorporate the free will choices of men into his plans. It's just a simple fact, you know? And, and, and God can get good out of their intentions, you know? I mean, their intentions are bad, but Genesis 50, verse 20, they meant it unto you for evil, but God meant it unto you for good. Paraphrasing, of course. Romans 8, 28, you know, God works all things for the good of his saints. Again, paraphrasing, you know? So the point is, is that God in his wisdom can get can, uh, incorporated into his plan. This does not at all prove that all sin throughout human history is God's plan. Same thing when Calvinists will see examples of God intervening in human history, like the case in Daniel 4. And they take this and will fallaciously, arbitrarily argue that God is causing all of human history. And they have to ignore the explicit scriptures that, that very explicitly 
teach that God does not cause everything that happens. Like Hosea 8, 4, they set up kings, but not by me. Isaiah 30, verse 1, you know, they have counsel, not by me. Paraphrasing. You know, Zechariah 1, 15. Isaiah 54, verse 15. Uh, Galatians 5, verse 6 to 8 shows that the Judaizers were, were uh, they say that Christ did not cause the Judaizers to do what they did. I mean, we could just go on and on. They have to ignore this to basically fit, uh, have their tool of doctrine because they have this pre-commitment. So we're seeing that right there. James White is, you know, he's got, he, he, he's a good uh, source for material to just show how Calvinism is completely eisegesis based and based on taking scriptures, turning the exceptions into the rule, outright adding their own doctrine to verses that it, it, it does not appear, you know, on and on it goes. Calvinism is Gnostic heresy, plain and simple. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.